Unfortunately, air compressors can get water inside them, which is why you have a drain at the bottom of the tank. And that's because there's moisture in the air, which is humidity. And hot air generally carries more moisture. And as the air is going through these super hot pumps up top, and it's going through all these little tiny orifices, they also create friction, and it gets even hotter. So the more the pump runs, the hotter the air gets, and the more moisture you'll get inside your tank and through the lines. The water vapor in the air condenses under compression, and the more you compress the air, the more the pressure increases. And at these levels of pressure, it can pretty much squeeze moisture out of the air like you could squeeze water out of a sponge. So the more you run this thing, the more water you're gonna get inside of it. Not only does enough water rob you of air capacity in your tank, but worst of all, water in your tank will corrode and rust it, increasing the risk of it bursting. And on top of that, with the moisture in the air already coming in, it's gonna transfer even more moisture down the rest of the air lines, and that's gonna get transferred to whatever tools you're using. And in turn, that can rust and destroy air tools, it can screw up paint jobs, it can clog and mess up powder coating and sandblasting. So you definitely want to have other things to battle that along the line after your air compressor, which I talk about in other videos. To drain the water out of your tank, you can use a manual ball valve. You open it up by turning this in line with the pipe to drain it, and then when you're done, you close it. It recommends that you drain it daily if you use it daily. Or you can use an automatic tank drain valve. The automatic tank drain valve still has a manual shut off in case you want to turn it off before you get to the automatic part. But if you're going to use the automatic part, you want to leave this turned on, which is in line with the pipe here. And then you're going to base everything off the time intervals here. On this side, you have seconds. On this side, you have minutes. The seconds is how long do you want to keep the valve open to drain it. And the minutes is how often do you want it to open that drain valve. So you can set the seconds for as low as a half a second all the way up to 10 seconds. And you can set the minutes as low as every half minute all the way up to every 45 minutes. And if you don't want it to go off at all, then you can just leave this unplugged. And I've even heard of people setting this up with their light switch in the garage to actually turn on only when the light switch in the garage is turned on. This installs by simply screwing it into here and plugging this into the wall. I'm going to go ahead and put Teflon tape on my threads just to keep it airtight. Whether you have a manual drain or an automatic drain valve, you still want a hose to direct which way the water drains out. And what I'm going to do temporarily is just a drain pan. I'm going to put that here for now. Eventually I do plan on uh, having it go outside. Uh, but as you can see, it only has a female uh, half inch uh, hole on here and you're not going to be able to fit the hose on there. So I went ahead and bought a half inch to three quarter inch adapter that's going to screw onto here and then it's going to let the hose screw onto here and then put your hose into your drain pan. 